I was born on the prairie, where the wind blew free and there was nothing to break the light of the sun. I lived like my fathers before me, and like them, I lived happily. The Kansas landscapes, the Kansas weathers have contributed to the peculiar emotional hold which Kansas has on Kansans. Kansas, with its subtle beauty and diversity of landscape, is the stage upon which a human drama has been set. Its actors are the many peoples who found opportunities and challenges here. As varied as the land upon which they lived, they are real people with real stories. For more than 130 years, it has been the mission of the Kansas Historical Society to collect, preserve, and share these stories. Here's a sampling of those efforts in 2008. The discovery of gold in the mountains of California in 1849 electrified the nation. At the same time, interest turned to the fertile valleys of Oregon Territory. Harriet Palmer was only 11 years old when in 1852, her family began the 2,000 mile trek west along the Oregon-California Trail. By spring, they were among the long line of clean, white covered wagons for the journey. Their adventure would pass through land was home to the Kansas Indians that was destined to become the state we call Kansas. On and on we journeyed, averaging 15 miles a day over cactus, sagebrush, and hot sand. Everybody's shoes gave out and we bartered with Indians for moccasins. New tours based on Kansas curriculum standards give students the opportunity to walk in the footsteps of actual Oregon California Trail families. Schools can take part in these interactive tours at the Kansas Museum of History or two of our state historic sites, Hollenberg Pony Express Station near Hanover and Shawnee Indian Mission in Fairway. With Kansas opened for settlement, builders working on the Union Pacific Railroad encountered land that was home to Cheyenne, Arapaho, Kiowa, and Comanche. Americans wanted this land because they saw opportunities to build farms, towns, and trade routes. Foot and cavalry soldiers came to serve at Fort Hayes, where they protected railroad workers and settlers and tried to keep peace with native peoples. This diverse fort community of Civil War veterans, Buffalo soldiers, traders, families, and native peoples held conflicting views of what the land should and could be, often resulting in an uneasy coexistence. The waters are dried up and the buffalo are scarce. We heard that you fed Indians who came to your post, and we thought we would come and see you. In 2008, the guardhouse at Fort Hayes received extensive rehabilitation using federal transportation enhancement funds. The exterior of the structure appears now as it did in 1872, the year it was built. The Historical Society also raised more than $200,000 from a Preserve America grant and a generous donation from the Dane G. Hansen Foundation. Funds will be used to develop new interactive exhibits to open in 2010 that depict the real people and the real stories of the fort. Agriculture has been the basis of the Kansas economy for decades. Most early farmers settled on 160 acres of land. Rich, cheap farmland was the principal incentive that lured me on from my Illinois home. In the beginning, corn was king in Kansas. It could be planted with simple tools and offered a higher yield than other grains. Once the railroad arrived, wheat dethroned corn as the state's major crop. Wheat could be shipped to other markets, which made its production profitable. Early on, farmers used pure horsepower to work their fields. The invention of the gasoline-powered tractor 20th century helped Kansas farmers dramatically increase their production. All parts of Kansas grow good corn, but in wheat, Kansas can beat the world. 2008 saw the completion of the Historical Society's Barn and Farmstead Survey. Barns have become an iconic symbol of our rural past, but in reality, they were built as practical, efficient workplaces. The completion of this survey makes it easier for property owners to list historic farms on the National Register of Historic Places, making the property eligible for a variety of financial incentives to aid in its preservation. The agricultural heritage of the state makes Kansans especially attuned to its climate. 
In Kansas, the weather is our favorite topic of conversation. It is changeable, extreme, and unpredictable. There are many tall tales about Kansas weather. A Kansas farmer was driving his cattle when he realized the extreme heat was tiring them out. He rushed to get a bucket of water for his cows to drink, and upon his return, he realized that one of his cows was suffering from heat stroke. As he turned around to check the rest of his cattle, the wind began blowing from the north. The farmer gazed down at his bucket to find the water frozen into ice. The 2008 special exhibit, Forces of Nature, focused on the more serious side of weather in Kansas, tornadoes, drought, blizzards, and prairie fires. Each year, the Kansas Historical Society collects items that tell the story of our state. This year's editions encompass the story of Bleeding Kansas when Free State members founded the community of Quindaro in Wyandotte County. Overlooking the Missouri River, Quindaro was ideally suited as a stop on the Underground Railroad. When the historic site was threatened, the public demanded their history be saved. As a result, nearly 200 cubic feet of excavated artifacts were brought into the collections from the short-lived community. Deposits of coal in southeast Kansas drew European settlers from Slovenia to mining communities in the late 1800s. Here, they established branches of the Slovene National Benefit Society. In 2008, a large collection of photographs, ledgers, and other lodge documents were donated to the Historical Society. The soil of Ellsworth County helped one World War II veteran fulfill his American dream. After the war, there was high demand for decorative pottery. James Dryden used his GI Bill benefits to learn how to turn clay and volcanic ash found in the Ellsworth area into pottery. Dryden and his factory created works of art that sold across the country. In 2008, the authors of A Guide to Dryden Pottery donated more than 50 pieces to the Historical Society. The family of Lucinda Todd, one of 13 plaintiffs in the landmark case Brown versus Board of Education, donated a collection of photos and papers to the Historical Society. Among the items from Todd's daughter and son-in-law, Nancy and Ramon Noches, are an original handwritten draft outlining Todd's thoughts on the legal efforts. Our situation has become so unbearable that the local branch has decided to test the permissible law which we have here in Kansas. Concepcion Lopez found a way to utilize her culinary skills in Wichita in the early 1960s. She and her husband Rafael opened Connie's Mexico Cafe in 1963. Here, she made her own tortillas and served food based on traditions of their native Mexico. The restaurant continues to operate today. Their daughter, Delia Garcia, donated restaurant cookware and other items to the Historical Society. As our collections grow, we continue to develop new ways to share these stories with the people of Kansas. Project Archaeology allows students in grades 3 through 8 to learn by doing. Kansas Memory, an Award of Merit winner from the American Association of State and Local History, continues to expand as the largest online collection of Kansas primary sources. Read Kansas Cards, which promote literacy, also received an Award of Merit. The cards provide original readings about Kansas topics for students in grades K through 12. Interpretive signs were installed at Mara Dezine Massacre State Historic Site, making it easier for visitors to contemplate the historic event. A private donation from the K.T. Wiedemann Foundation to the William Allen White House State Historic Site will allow more students and tourists to discover the story of this Kansas family. You can be a part of this exciting time at the Kansas Historical Society. Visit the museum, state archives and library, state capitol, or one of our 16 state historic sites. Share your story by donating items from your family's collection. Make a donation to our nonprofit foundation or become a member. Help us continue to share the real people and real stories of Kansas. <laughs>